this is historical and economic uh, analyses. We're going to go over the, both of those uh, in this video. So first, let's start with historical. Um, again, one of the easiest, right? You're literally giving a history of the policy. <laughs> and depending on what type of policy you are looking at, uh, the history can be quite long. So be careful in this section because you can get mired down in a bunch of details way into the weeds, way more information than what I need or what a person would need if they were reading a historical analysis of the policy. So um, if we're talking about a policy in housing that dates back to the 1800s or a child welfare policy that came out in the 1800s or things like that, again, super long history there. You don't, we don't need a play-by-play -play of every detail. That's not what a historical analysis is. A historical analysis is a looking at how what happened in the past has influenced what is now happening today. So also important thing to keep in mind. You're not just giving me a rehash of and this year this happened and this year that happened and the next year this happened and now we are here. That doesn't tell me anything. What I need to know is back in this time, this decision was made it influenced people um, in this way, which then caused this other thing to happen. And then we had a new policy come out of that. And then those kinds of connections as to getting us from what happened here to where we are right now. So be careful about that. If you have a more recent policy, let's say, again, um, I used the example before of the ACA. That's a new policy within the last, you know, what, five years or so. Um, so there's not a lot of historical pieces to the ACA specifically. However, there's a lot of history about healthcare. And so if you're thinking about how did decisions, policy decisions way back when impact how we ended up with an ACA, that would be a historical analysis. It's not specific to the ACA because that's a brand new policy, but there may be things that connect to it. Same with DACA, um, that's a newer policy. So how does immigration and the way we felt about immigration as a country impact what DACA and where we are today with that? So those would be historical links that you can make to a policy that's happening now that's newer. But again, be careful because historical analysis can end up being, I mean, I've seen some students write papers that have a historical analysis of no kidding, six pages. Way, way, way too much. <laughs> way too much. It should be thorough, but it should not be the overall thing of your paper. Okay? So, um, and we're going to have a video at the end that's sort of the overall framework, number of pages, all that stuff. So we'll, we'll get to that. Okay? But now we're going to talk about economic analysis. So, Economic analysis, and I'm going to move this just a smidge so I can write as well. Economic analysis is more than just money. Now, it is about money. Uh, I do want to see figures, if possible, um, and any kind of an, um, numbers that, that you can find about what it's going to cost um, and what the overall look is for um, the economics of all of this. And you might put that in your choice analysis as well, uh, if you can find it. But economic analysis is more than just money. Even though I do want dollar figures, again, if you can find them, um, economic analysis is about more than that. So let's talk it through. So these three are what are called the three E's. Okay? Effectiveness, efficiency, and equity. And so an economic analysis is looking at the effectiveness, um, which seems maybe a little off, but really it's not, it fits perfectly. The effectiveness of the policy. Do the measures that we support, um, are they working? Okay, or is it working? So if this is a policy that is in So it should be, a, you, you should have picked a policy that is up and running. So is it working? 
policy market. Okay. Efficiency. Uh, how many benefits do we get? This is, are we getting our money's worth? Is the policy worth what we're paying it for? Um, we're paying all of this money to protect kids. Is it worth it? Is it worth all that money? And finally, equity. So this is about distribution. Again, sort of back to choice analysis, right? It's about distribution. Is it being distributed fairly, not evenly? Okay, let's talk that through for a minute. So equity is different than equality. Equality means that everybody gets the same amount. It's an equal share, right? So if I am a person of great wealth and you are a person who lives in poverty and the government says, we're gonna give a tax refund to everybody and it's gonna be the same amount. The $500 that I get is kind of cool, but it doesn't really mean anything. Um, it doesn't necessarily help me out because you know, I already have a lot of money the $500 you get might be amazing and pay your rent that month or buy food for your family for the next two months. So that could be a huge help. But it's not, so it's equal, we get the same amount, but the impact is different. And that's not equitable because I don't need that $500 in the first place because I have plenty already. You, however, could really benefit from getting 1000 or 1500 or 2000 so it's equity is not just about even distribution of benefit. It's about fairness of benefit. Does the person who needs it the most benefit from it? So that's equity. An economic analysis looks at the three E's. You should be talking about those in your analysis, okay? Now let's move over here to macro and opportunity costs. We'll start with macro. So macro is literally macro economics, okay? We don't necessarily need to look at micro here. We don't need to know what an individual person is gonna get from this, economically speaking. So if you've chosen a policy that is a, a cash benefit, we don't need to know that. We're looking at the macro benefit, um, macro economics. So it's looking at overall impact of this program. So things like, does it affect GDP? Okay, that would be something to take a look at in your analysis. Does it connect to inflation? Does it have anything to do with employment numbers? Those are the kinds of things um, that you want to be looking at. Does this policy affect our overall macro economy? Does it connect to what the macro economy is doing? Maybe also another one is a stock market. Yeah. All of those are questions that you want to be thinking about and answering. Now, this is not as structured as like a choice analysis, but you want to be talking about these things. You don't have to have a paragraph that says effectiveness and then talk about it and efficiency, in it, but they need to be in there somewhere. Okay, I need to be able to find them. Your macroeconomics, you need to talk about macroeconomics. That might be a heading in your economic analysis, but GDP, inflation, employment, stock market, you're your policy may impact zero of these. Okay, probably it's gonna impact some of them in some way. But um, for example's sake, let's say it doesn't impact any of them. Then you just need to say that. <laughs> or um, 
if it impacts the stock market or impacted employment, let's say, then talk about how it impacted employment and why that was and what happened and so forth and so on. But you don't need to say it didn't impact the GDP, it didn't impact inflation, it impacted employment, it didn't impact the stock market. You don't need to go through all four of them. These are examples of macroeconomic overall impact for our country. And so you just need to be thinking about those as you're talking about what the macroeconomic influence of your policy is. Now, if you're talking about a federal policy, then all of these make sense, right? If you're talking about a state policy, then it's probably not gonna impact GDP, it's probably not gonna impact the stock market because those are national things. But it might, it might impact employment in the state of Colorado, it might impact uh, inflation in the state of Colorado. So you would look at only those two pieces as opposed to everything else. So again, any questions that come up from this, reach out to me. Now, the final piece of an economic analysis is the trickiest one. It is called opportunity costs. Um, I'm gonna move it down actually, because again, tricky. So, this is a look at, in the simplest terms, what opportunities were missed or what other things could have been done if this policy wasn't costing money. If, what else could we use, uh, could have used that money for? So, um, so it kind of looks at comparisons. Okay, of one policy to another policy. So you might look at um, a, a comparative immigration policy, for example, if you're doing DACA, or a um, comparative adult protection policy as opposed to um, a CPS policy, things like that. Um, one example is um, money to law enforcement, let's say. Versus money to prevention. So how much are we spending here? How much are we spending here? Comparatively speaking, are we getting the most bang for our buck? And helping people, because remember we're going back to social welfare policy, not just policy in general, right? So are we helping people here the most? Are we, and this is law enforcement, arresting people who are high, are keeping their community safe. So they are helping, they are doing the right thing by the rest of us who don't want to have people breaking into our homes or causing harm to our families or whatever the case may be, right? We don't want that. But is it, is it money well spent to think about, okay, we want safety, but we also just don't want people using it in the first place. And so how do we, how do we compare those two financially and figure out which opportunity is gonna be the best bang for our buck? So that is a quick example of um, opportunity costs. Also, another question to maybe ask yourself here is, what do we have to give up? Okay, what do we have to give up? If we do policy A, what other things might we have been able to do that now we can't do? Now, sometimes it can get into this sort of downward slope of um, we have, you know, 500 different things we could have done with that money. So how do we pick which one? Well, which one was really the one that was on the table? Which one was really the one that made the most sense, comparatively speaking? So. So think about what had to, what did they, what do we have to give up in order to 
pay for this program fully. Um, if it's fully funded, what do we have to give up for that? If it's not fully funded, what would we have to give up for that? That's an opportunity cost, okay? So your economic analysis is going to have these things in it. And these are things I'm going to look for, okay? It's going to have the three E's. Again, somewhere in the paper, if you want to break them out individually, that's fine. If you want to interleave them, that's also fine. It's going to have a macro section and it's going to have opportunity costs. Those are going to be the three areas of your economic policy that I'm going to be looking for. Okay? All right, and again, if you have any questions, please be sure to be in touch and let me know.